Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third day of our deep dive showcases. So today we have Learn by Doing Astrophotography. My name is June Bea, CEO of Bea Group. I'm so excited to welcome all of you to this showcase. So our internship, this is a seventh year. Bea Group's been involved with a high school student internship program. It is something that's paid. Uh, it is six weeks. And the first week they, well, all of the interns have applied. They submit an application resume. Uh, they did interviews. And, and then the first week of their internship, they worked with us at Bayer Group where they got their work email and they had leadership sessions, communication mastery. They've been participating in, in the They've been participating in social justice in the workplace sessions. And then starting week two, and for the last five weeks, they've been working with the Deep Dive Leads. And so we've been very fortunate to be collaborating with Blue Dot Education. And we have Andrew here who is going to share with us what our interns have been doing in his Deep Dive. And then they will share what they've been working on. So hi, Andrew. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, I have to share that we've been working with Downey, Glendale, and Davis. And this is, uh, again, we're, we've been all working from home. So we are here on Zoom. All right, Andrew, take it away. Thank you, June. So happy to be here and celebrate the work that all these interns did today. Um, I just want to share really quickly that uh, I represent Blue Dot Education, the organization that these uh, young folks were doing an internship with. Uh, it's a social and non-justice nonprofit, and we really um, try to focus on developing uh, um, projects that are educational based. We use education as a vehicle and a mechanism to try to achieve our goals with social and nonprofit, uh, I'm sorry, with social and uh, environmental justice work. One of the things we've recognized as being in, uh, uh, something to pursue and a goal for us is uh, trying to find fields of practice and careers that might not have as much access uh, to young folks when they're younger um, and um, as much representation within that field and how might we be able to develop programs around uh, creating more access and representation within that. And so we've identified astronomy as one of those fields or space science. Um, and of course, there's lots of factors that lead to less access and uh, representation. You know, one of them is if you want to do astronomy, um, you know, you have to have a means of getting to a dark sky. And often that requires leaving urban areas um, and heading out to uh you know, rural areas where the skies are darker and also like having access to equipment. And, uh, you know, with advances in technology, there's astronomy equipment that is um, accessible through remote applications and online that we have been fortunate to be given access to. And um, before this internship, we pretty much were just handed over the keys to operate observatories from all around the world and uh, to see what we could do. So it was a very open-ended internship where all these young folks that are about to present will show what they what they were able to accomplish when given an opportunity to just experiment and play a bit and uh, you know see how far we could take the development of this program to create a virtual astronomy experience that exposes uh, more people it creates more access um, to uh, the field of astronomy and so I'm going to share right now and we'll get in there very quickly. So this was just a quick overview of, you know, the, uh, the applications that we were using. Um, we were given access to the Las Cumbres Observatory. It's a global network of telescopes uh, from all around the world. Um, and you can see this map kind of like points out where these different observatories were located throughout the globe. And, um, you know, throughout our time together, interns uh, were submitting observations to these, uh, to these, to these telescopes, to these observatories. Uh, similar to how, you know, it would be done in, within a science field. It's the same exact process. They were submitting, you know, proposals for get, getting data from, uh, you know, um, evening observations from these observatories. And then we were processing that. And then we were curating it and presenting it for, for audiences. So uh, very similar to what, you know, they've done recently with the James Webb Space Telescope, which has been done for a long time with, you know, Hubble and other public access to data. But um, this, they had a unique opportunity to uh, gain access to this network, which, which was awesome. And um, just to give a sense of some of the uh, observatories that they had access to, these are just some images from some of the observatories from around the world that are highlighted in the image above. And so 
you know, without further ado, I'm going to let the interns kind of share what they were able to do. This was focused in astrophotography as kind of like an opening type of program to give uh, people an opportunity to, to see what it's like and to uh, do some, some introductory work within the field of astronomy. All right, so without further ado, uh, in no particular order, just because it's here, why don't we start off with Oliver? And we also have uh, some of their work here that I will share as well. All Oliver, right. just let me know when you want to go to the next slide too as well. Okay, all right. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Oliver Pellefox um, and I'm gonna be a senior at Downey High School. Um, if it's okay, I just wanna start by actually explaining my experience um, with the astrophotography internship. Um, I had always been uh, very, very interested in um, anything that had to do with space, uh, pretty much anything astronomy related since I was really little, um, as I'm sure a lot of people here were. Um, and I would also um, very often visit the Columbia Memorial Space Center here in Downey. Um, and I'm actually a robotics student um, at Downey High School. Um, and because of that, I had always thought that when I was a senior, I would be applying um, to colleges as a mechanical engineering major. Um, and this internship actually really showed me that I could combine both space and engineering. So I believe that now um, I will be applying as an astronautical engineering major um, wherever it is possible. So yeah, it's something big that this um, internship really did for me um, and really helped me realize. Um, so not only did I figure this out though, uh, I also learned that this internship, um, in this internship, there is always a way to add creativity. Um, and not only in this internship, it could also be in any um, working environment. Um, but for this internship specifically, um, we were able to choose what pictures um, we took and going even further than that, it could have been how we processed those images. Um, so there was always a way to kind of add your own touch to things. Um, and I feel like that was really, really important. Um, something that I would have loved to experience would have been um, an actual in-person kind of experience, uh, which I understand, you know, couldn't happen, but um, it, it would have been nice to, you know, hang out with everybody and um, just be able to kind of experience this in a more exciting setting, I guess. Um, something that I also learned about myself was that whenever I'm very, very interested in something, um, I'll usually like submerge myself into that topic um, and often lose track of time, which I did multiple times throughout this internship. Um, some of the funnest parts, in my opinion, were the days after we would actually submit observations because they would always come back, or at least mine would always come back. Um, and I would always be really excited to see, you know, what, what awaited me. So. Um, with all that being said, uh, these are some of the images that I took during this internship. Uh, so this is uh, my star, Arcturus. Um, it is uh, one of the biggest stars in the night sky, um, and it shines uh, about 113 times brighter than the sun. Um, so if you want to switch, yeah, there are a couple of facts about my star. Um, and yeah, you could switch to the next one. Um, this is Andromeda. It was the picture of um, my galaxy. And it is, uh, the, I believe, the closest galaxy to the Milky Way. Um, and there are actually, it, it is really, really big, as I found out through um, the picture not being able to, you know, capture the whole thing. But um, there are about uh, one trillion stars in the Andromeda galaxy. So that's a crazy amount. Yeah, it's a lot. So yeah, if you want to switch to the next one, there are a couple of facts. And uh, my nebula was Orion. So um, it's actually the closest uh, star nursery or star forming region um, near Earth and is actually about 2 million years old. So um, I, I really, really like this one. Um, it's just a beautiful uh, nebula. And um, I just had a really, really good experience with all of this. So yeah, that was on my last picture. And I just wanted to say um, thank you to everyone at Bay Group 
And thank you to Andrew, especially, and to Blue Dot Education, because, you know, this internship actually, you know, changed a lot for me. Um, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. So th thank you all for that. Um, and thank you for uh, hearing me out. Thank you, Oliver, so much. That was, that was awesome. Um, in imagery, in presentation, in reflection, everything. Thank you so much. Uh, I do want to put this out there that all the images that you see here were actually uh, taken by and submitted observations um, by each of the interns here. All right, so now we have Niobe. Uh, yeah, hi. So my name is Niobe Lobos. I'm an upcoming senior at Warren High, and this has just been my experience with this internship. So I want to start off by saying I this is such an incredible experience. Um, I personally loved photography and astro astronomy and just combining the two was something that, you know, it was great. Um, you know, as a little kid taking pictures of the stars and stuff was a little more difficult because I didn't really have access to any of um, the technology that we have access to now. Um, so yeah, and Andrew is just an incredible person to work with. I think you could say that for everyone. Um, he you know, he made it created he created a safe environment, a safe and fun environment. He make you want to join your next intern meeting. So that was definitely a plus. So thank you for that, Andrew. Um, but yeah, um, just gaining you really this internship allowed me to get into my creative side a little more, which was great. Um, you know, getting access to these photos and um, being able to edit them and process them in the way you wanted them to when you were, I was happy with my work, which made me feel great within itself. So yeah, um, I, we can start presenting. Yeah. So my first star is Altair, uh, it's also known as Alpha Aquilae, and it is the 12th most brightest star in the sky, but it's the brightest star in the Aquilae. Um, it's most known for, um, being one of the three summer triangle stars, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's 6.7 light years away from Earth. Um, this star, when we originally were looking into it, um, this is one of the brightest ones that caught my attention. So this is why I chose it. And processing the image was fun and just amazing in itself. There was actually like a beam of light that I kind of like edited out and stuff, but this is my, what it came out to. So yeah, um, we can go to the next slide and then the next one, yeah. So this is my galaxy, uh, it's Messier 99 are also known as M99. And then, um, yeah, so this is known as like a grand spiral and kind of has a similar structure to the Milky Way, which is pretty cool. Um, it was discovered in 1781 um, by a French astronomer. His name is Pierre Machin. I think that's how you his name. Um, and this is, it was located in the constellation of Coma Berenices and it's 55 million light years away from Earth. Um, I really like this. Um, galaxy. It was more, unfortunately, it's a little small because of the way it is, but um, it was definitely pretty. And that's one of the reasons why I caught my attention. And it has a nice bright star in the upper left hand corner, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so you can go to the next page. And this is um, my nebula. So, fun fact we actually, this wasn't available to us at the time because it's mainly more visible in the winter. So one thing that Andrew showed us is that we were able to gain um, other information, other data from other telescopes and combine them together to process the image into what it is, like being able to get access to my nebula, which is pretty cool. So combining like the reds, the blues and greens from that data and processing them and getting them, which is pretty cool. Even though I didn't have access to it with the, tele the, the telescopes we had, we were able to get data and edit it, which is pretty cool. And it's, it's a pretty cool um, nebula. So Crabby Nebula was originally discovered, I guess you could say, in um, 1054, where Chinese astronomers um, originally just saw it as like a guest star, um, but it was, which is only visible at the time for about a month. Um, but this guest star ended up being a supernova explosion, which created the Crabby Nebula. And it wasn't until further like discovered um, until this English astronomer named John Bevis really just looked into it and um, yeah. And yeah, so that was that. And um, 
It has a magnitude of 8.4 and is located 6,500 light years away from Earth. Um, so yeah, this, this experience was incredible. I loved every second of it. And if I could do it again, I would. Um, just the stars and the sky and everything really grasped my attention. And yeah, so I'm very thankful for this experience. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Naomi. That was super impressive. Um, just to add a little more information as we go along here, the things I should have, you know, said before we began and kicked off. Um, you know, each one of the interns had an opportunity to put together these presentations with their own creative capacity. Uh, and also we were um, trying to consider ways that these might be uh, uh, not only supports for virtual um, outings, but also for our virtual kind of uh, astronomy work, but also for in-person star parties. And so the, these uh, slides that you're seeing can also be printouts that people can use when they're at an in-person place. And that was one of the driving forces behind their creativity. How can they make it accessible to public audiences? And you know, I really appreciated all the artwork that they put in there. And I just wanted to point that out because I thought that, you know, we're about to see, we already have seen, and we're about to see a lot more uh, of the creativity that they put into their work. All right, Jose, you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Oh boy. Hello guys. Um my name is Jose Calderon or Calderon Calderon, however you can pronounce it. Um so yeah, I'm basically about to be a senior in Downey High School. And I do represent the Downey Unified School District. And hmm, when going to this internship, I didn't expect to be in a, in a deep dive that involves space or outer space. Mm -hmm. I wasn't too interested in space. I mostly thought that I didn't expect this I mostly thought I didn't expect to like this internship more than I do now because I didn't have much of a passion for space itself. And, but when I did get around to it, I ended up kind of liking it. Hmm. I, I think the fun part was like, looking for our own stars and later on do research. Andrew helping to get photos from online and looking at them is interesting now that I think of it. The size that the stars from above us are bigger than we think due to, to, due to them being like far away. Yeah. Yeah. And they're pretty bright. Okay. <laughs> There's my star. Alioth or Alioth, however you pronounce it. Yeah. The star is known as Epsilon Ursae Maid Majoris. It is the brightest star in the constellation of Ursa Major. It is 82.55 from the Earth. Alioth is off is of Arabic origin, meaning sheep's fat tail, which sounds a little bit funny. I can see that. It's spinning and magnetic poles position at almost a 90 degree angle to one another. Alioth is easy to find due to being in one of the best known asterisms in the night sky. It shares an area in the sky with Messier 106. Okay. And there's my galaxy, Sombrero Galaxy. See? Yeah. Edison, bro. Sombrero Galaxy. Oh, um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, um, 
Oh, sorry, I can't see the top. I'm gonna go. Sorry about this, guys. We can just go to your next object here if you want, Jose. Um, Sombrero Galaxy or M104 is about 28 million light years from our planet. The disk is large and shares a resemblance to the Mexican hat itself. Um, Um, Sombrero's distance to Earth is about 29 million light years with a 200 radius, a radius of 25,000 light years. The apparent mass of it is about um, negative 0 0.000000008 billion. The, the center is a big rock is a big black hole. Sombrero can be seen by a, an ordinary telescope due to its brightness of around 9.0 Vestosleffer. This galaxy moving from the Milky Way helps prove the universe is expanding. Okay. Now on to Messier 23, which is my nebula. Okay. It's a star cluster between Sagittarius and Ophiuchus. It's also known as NGC 6494. It was examined by S.N. Savolopoulos in 1953. It has, a, it has 149 stars. The distance is about 2,000 and, and hmm, 150 light years or 659 parsecs from the Earth. It was discovered by Charles Messier himself in June 20, 1764. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you so much, Jose. All right, awesome. Let's move along. Uh, Kate. Um, hi, I'm Kayla Mendez. Um, I'm an upcoming senior at Downey High School. And um, I was honestly very shocked at how helpful and comfortable this, in this, this internship felt. Um, not only were we organized as a group, but Andrew also got us to feel more comfortable and familiar with one another, which I really liked. It wasn't like awkward or anything. Um, I love the freedom and, and creativity in our projects. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I love the freedom and creativity in our projects. Um, we were not allowed to choose. I mean, we were not, we were allowed to choose what we were research, yet also compile the um, research in our own creative ways and styles, which I really liked. Um, the internship felt more like a family than a job because we were all like, we grew very close. Like it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't awkward or anything. Um, it was more of a way to help individuals with certain interests get close and build together, which I really liked also. Um, we learned how to take photos of objects billions of miles away and got familiar while doing it, which I thought was really interesting and isn't an opportunity that a lot of people get to have, but it was a beautiful experience and I hope many others can participate in the future. Um, this is my star, Zeta Ursae Majoris. Um, yeah. 
can you go to the next slide, Andrew? Um, it's a quadruple star. It's a quadruple star system in Ursae Majoris, and it's the brightest star in that system, and with a combined apparent magnitude of 2.04. The two components of this double star, referred to as Mizar A and Mizar B, take 5,000 or more years to complete orbit and come within 380 astro astronomical units of each other. It lies at a distance of 82.9 light years from Earth. Um, and this is my galaxy, the Black Eye Galaxy. Can you, okay. <laughs> um, it's well known for its prominent dark band below its nucleus. Um, it's a relatively isolated spiral, 17 million light years away in the mildly northern constellation of Coma Berenices. Um, the Black Eye Galaxy is also often referred to as the Evil Eye Galaxy, which also refers to its prominent dark band below its nucleus. Um, it has an estimated diameter of 54,000 light years, and it was formed as a result of the collision of two unknown galaxies. Um, this is my nebula, the Lagoon Nebula. Um, the Nagoon Nebula, nebula is a giant in in interstellar cloud in the constellation Sagittarius, which I thought was very interesting. Um, one of the only two star-forming nebulae, uh, faintly visible to the eye from mid-northern latitude, latitudes. Um, it's 5,000 light years away from Earth, and it spans 33 light years across and glows as a visual magnitude of six, which is very bright. <laughs> Um, thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Those were incredibly impressive images. All right, Maddox. Let's see, I don't see Maddox. Is he? Is sorry. Okay. okay, Maddox might be having a little bit of. Uh, we can come back. Okay. Let's move on to Madeline. Hello, my name is Madeline McChristian, and I'm going to be a senior at Warren High School. Um, I'm just going to begin by saying that this was a fantastic opportunity for me. With this, with this internship, I was finally given the means and tools to capture all the times when I would look up at the night sky and wish that I had the opportunity to. Um, I've always been fascinated by the universe and space, and I can undoubtedly say that this work satisfied this part of me. Throughout my time in this work, I created three images, each pertaining to the night sky, and I worked to enhance already beautiful celestial objects. Um, collectively, we as interns were given the task in deciding how we would present these images to the public, and I found that the underlying component of creativity and freedom to be one of my favorite aspects of this whole internship. This is the star that I chose, Gamma Lupi. Gamma Lupi is a third magnitude B-type blue giant star in the constellation of Lupus, meaning that it is the third brightest star in Lupus. Um, Gamma Lupus is not one star, but two. This is probably my favorite fact that I've learned. Um, it's, it's one of the stars that is a binary star system, which means that it's not one star, but it's two that are gravitationally bound to one another or a mass in between them. So it appears to the naked eye as one star, but it's really two. Um, if you are able to view Gamma Lupi from your location, you are in fact looking back in time, you are seeing how it looks years ago. This is one of my favorite facts about any celestial images. Um, when I learned this, my mind was blown that you are looking at something years ago because of light years and the transfer from that. I thought that was really interesting. This is my galaxy, Messier 63, the Sunflower Galaxy, called the Sunflower Galaxy because of its yellow core. It's located in the constellation um, Cans Ved Ventus Ventusi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The Sunflower Galaxy is given its name due to the bright yellow center of its core. M63 is a um, it's a spiral galaxy, meaning that it does not have defined outstretched arms like you would see in other galaxies, but it appears to have a meshing of many discontinuous arms. The galaxy is located roughly 27 million light years from Earth. My final project that I worked on was the Trifid Nebula. 
The Triffid Nebula is given its name due to the three bands of interstellar dust which lie on top of it, the name meaning divided into three lobes. Messier 20 includes a unique combination of an open cluster of stars, an emission nebula, a reflection nebula, and a dark nebula. The M20 nebula resides in the constellation of Sagittarius and 5,200 light years from Earth. And that was my work, and I really appreciated the opportunity from Andrew and this internship. I found myself very satisfied with my work in the end. Thank you. Thank you, Madeline. All right, Lydell. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Lydell Perry. Uh, I'm going to be a junior at Da Vinci High School in Davis uh, this coming year, and I um, I really enjoyed this inter internship. Um, I felt like uh, some of my peers said earlier that uh, it felt more like a family, and I would have to agree. We really did build off of each other. Um, my um, as Jose mentioned, my uh, in his star. Uh, my galaxy, apparently, I, I didn't know this until he said it, but my galaxy shares the same area in the, uh, in the sky as his star, which I didn't really know, I, I didn't know about. And uh, I really uh, would like to thank Andrew for making uh, this community, like, like help start out the community in this internship, really felt close in it. But um, I'm going to get to my galaxy now. Uh, this is, so I wasn't able to get a star picture because there was a few issues with LCO and the time of uh, like where the stars were and all that. But so this was my uh, first picture and it is amazing. This is a, this is Messier 106. It's a, you can go to the next uh, thing. It's a, pretty large galaxy and it's 22 million light years away so the light coming off of it the light from this photo are it, it, it's two million year old light which is insane uh and it has a diameter of 135,000 light years which is very big and i think uh the one of the it's only beaten out in our galaxy uh, neighborhood by Andromeda, I think, not 100% sure, but it has, um, uh, like, uh, this was where we first started to, like, be able to calibrate our cosmic distance ladder, which is how we measure how far a galaxy is or something like that, because of the uh, a certain kind of star inside of the galaxy is very similar to our galaxy as well as many other galaxies and we weren't really able to do that until we started working with this one which i found uh incredible because this is like this is millions of light years away you wouldn't think that it'd be so useful right now uh you can continue on to the next one. This is the Helix Nebula. It's a, um, it's also known as the Eye of God Nebula, which is, and the Eye of Sauron Nebula. Uh, the world really is ruled by a bunch of nerds. Um, it's a planetary nebula. So it shot off these, um, these uh, ionized dust particles or light and uh, from a star that turned into either a bigger star or shrank something. And that's what we see. And it's, it, it, the reason why it's called the Helix Nebula is because it looks like you're looking down a spiral staircase, apparently. And um, this is uh, where we found cometary knots, which are like these weird structures in the ionized dust and light and all that that make this weird like i wish i could have a picture of it i, I wish it, i should put a picture there it has like uh it is like pushing away 
the um the dust and all that away from it and i just learned so much from this internship in terms of uh science and space and all that and i had no idea how much i could influence uh space right now at my age it's kind of incredible and blue dot and all that they're making it uh possible for everyone like me y you can't get a photo i'm in a rather small town davis is a f it's not that big but you can only see like maybe planets at best and so uh if you're in that light polluted area i really liked that this internship gave you the opportunity to just do astronomy from your home and it took a few days but it was definitely worth it in the end the photos we got are really really cool and uh yeah thank you everyone for this thank you lydell that was awesome and i will remember that you know nerds really do rule the earth <laughs> it's one of the, they get the naming rights for sure. You know, it's one of the best lines I've ever heard. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, Anirvan, how are you? I'm doing good, Danchu. Thank you. Um, I hope you're doing well too. All right. So my name is Anirvan Goldham. I am a upcoming junior, incoming junior at uh, Davis Senior High School. I live in Davis too. And this internship has definitely, if there's nothing else I can take away from it, um, I will definitely take away the fact that I learned that um my skies are very very light polluted out here in davis but um besides that sorry that was a bit of a tangent um so <clears throat> before i uh get started with my presentation i would just like to give my thanks to everybody within uh work wonder um whether it's uh in this internship um helping you know create a collaborative work environment or you know outside uh, of this internship like maybe at the weekly meetings and stuff i just like to thank everybody that um you know just kind of had a conversation with me and helped this uh be such a great experience um i really appreciated um everybody i got to talk to uh during this internship and um also i just like to mention that um with the work that uh, I've done in this internship, um, my appreciation for observational observational astronomy has significantly increased. Um, and I'm just I'm really appreciative of that too, because for the longest time I've been, you know, focusing on theoretical astronomy, the kind of astronomy that I'd be able to do at school. And um this internship was, you know, kind of a a bit of a change, a bit of a breath of fresh air. So um, with that being said, uh, let's get into my astrophotography showcase. What a nice title page. All right. Um, so if you'll go to the next slide, please, Andrew. So uh, my first image that I created was of Alpha Centauri. Um, just a little bit about the process of um, creating this image. So when I got back to observation of this star, it had something known as diffraction spikes going through the middle of the image. So um, for, you know, photo purposes, I got rid of those to make it look nice. And I kind of, you know, dehazed the image and I clarified it a little uh, using, you know, Photoshop and stuff like that. And there is uh, that image of Alpha Centauri. And in the as you can see in the bottom left, um, I've pointed out where Proxima Centauri is um, as in terms of, you know, how far away it is from the sun. And it's not very far. It's very, very close. And in the bottom right, you'll see that I've pointed an arrow towards where Alpha Centauri is in the Centaurus constellation. So Alpha Centauri is actually a three-star system. I know we've seen a couple of binaries and quadruples too, but it's right in the middle, three-star system. So the first um, star, which is the one that uh, you'll see the most of in the image, is Alpha Centauri A, and it is similar to the sun in pretty much every way. And Alpha Centauri B is not exactly visible when you take an image of it. It's smaller and dimmer. It gives off an orange color, but it's still there. 
um, you just uh, need uh, what is known as spectroscopy to be able to uh, decipher um, the two stars and what light they're giving off. But yeah, these two together actually shine brighter than all but two stars in the night sky. So um, those are um, two stars that are actually a binary system. Uh, they, they revolve around each other. And Proxima Centauri is the third star that's rotating around those two rotating. So they're rota rotating around the binary star system. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's small red, very dim. Um, but together, that's the system. And one really, really uh, crucial thing about um, this system is that Proxima Centauri, the smallest star, actually um, has a lot of planets uh, that are very similar to Earth. And it's definitely been a topic of focus in the astronomy field for a while. All right. So my galaxy, um, it's NGC 4314. If I could use a better name for it, I definitely would, but I think that's what we're going to have to stick with uh, now. Um, it's a very small galaxy um, in this image, and uh, I'll get into the reasons for that later. Um, this image didn't really need removal of diffraction spikes, but I still did a little bit of clarifying. And in the top right, you will see I've put an image of the Coma Cluster, Coma Berenice constellation, um, also known as. And um, that is where this galaxy is. I know um, Coma Berenices has been mentioned a couple of times. So there's a little bit of a visual representation of what that cluster looks like. All right. All right. So NGC 4314, it is a spiral galaxy, but its spirals are not exactly perfect. Um, that's the best way I can uh, explain it because then it gets into a bit of Term, uh, a bit of like complicated terminology. Um, but yeah, it's in the Coma Berenices constellation, which is 53 million light years away. So that explains why it's very um, hard to get a really big image of it unless you're launching a telescope out into space. And when you do, you get back some really cool images that show its cool nuclear ring um, where stars are formed. And um, Unfortunately, that is where all of the information about this galaxy ends, and I think it would be a really cool um, galaxy to do further research into. Um, so on to the nebula, Dumbbell Nebula, also known as M27. I'm just going to give a moment for the audience to notice some of the colors, as um, the colors will be of a little bit importance in just a moment. All right. I think, I think that's enough time for ob observing the colors. Uh, we can move on to the next slide. All right, so Messier 27, the Dumbbell Nebula. So it's the first planetary nebula to be discovered. And I believe by some of the, I'll go off of some of the definitions uh, previously. A planetary nebula is pretty much a nebula that is formed when the star comes to the end of its life and it kind of, implodes. I hope that's the correct word. I don't know if it's explode or implodes. Um, it was discovered by Messier himself in uh, 1764. So this nebula is 1200 light years away, which is really not that much. It's very, very close. And it's in the constellation Volpecula. So as I mentioned, you know, um, in terms of observing the colors, red represents nitrogen and sulfur in uh, the nebula. Green represents hydrogen, blue represents oxygen. And within that nebula, over time, uh, there have been quite a lot of knots of gas and dust that have um, become three times the mass of the Earth, which to us humans, uh, considering that, is uh, quite amazing. So with the glitz and glamour of the work I've done in this internship out of the way, I just want to mention three really uh, important things that I've learned. Um, through this internship. The first is getting the chance to uh, do this internship, you know, use the resource that we had, like uh, Las Cumbres Observatory, and, um, you know, uh, getting the chance to, um, with the tools that I had, like uh, some of the archives and stuff, uh, take images and process them with like Photoshop and stuff, uh, doing that technical work alongside um, having a work uh, a work environment that is opposed to school environments, really collaborative. Uh, getting that chance, um, I consider myself very fortunate. And once again, I really appreciate it. 
However, um, you know, that brings me to um, my next point, which is that, you know, not everybody gets uh, the opportunity that I got. Um, I can't help but think, you know, there's a lot of uh, people that have a love for the stars just like me, but don't quite have access to the resources uh, like I do and uh, get to explore the world of astronomy in the way I did. And before this internship, I could probably uh, see myself feeling that way. Um, I had to really dig and find for any astronomy work I could do at school. Um, but with that, I think the third um, and more important point is that with the kind of work that we do in this internship, you know, the infographics, um, the presentations, maybe in the future, like stargazing handbooks or websites curated for star information, I think we can inspire and encourage uh, communities across the globe to like look up at night and just kind of notice the universe that is around us. And furthermore, motivate people who have uh, a love for the stars like me to go out and find the opportunities that I got and, you know, take a chance on them uh, the way I did. And uh, I think um, the fourth and most valuable lesson that I learned from this internship is that astronomy is truly about what's possible. And with that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was awesome. Great presentation. All right. Thank you. Let's uh, let's move on. Julian. All right. All right, my name is Julian Rosas. I'm going to be an upcoming senior at Downing High School. I guess to start off with, I'll share my, my thoughts on the internship. My initial thoughts on this program, program were that it was going to be kind of weird, like operating telescopes online instead of in person. Because like, personally, when I thought of astrophotography, like initially, I thought, you know, by using like an actual telescope, you can put your hands on. But like, if you think about it, it's probably more of a blessing considering the light pollution we get here in LA. Plus, once we started getting the pictures of the space objects we researched, I, I kind of just like that, that thought like already disappeared from my mind because being able to like take the pictures and process them and like do how we want, do what we want with them, kind of maybe forget about that because it was pretty cool being able to do that. And uh, the internship was like interesting, unique experience that showed me that there are certain things I have to learn on my own. For example, like I spent like hours researching like how to like process photos. And although I never really mastered it, I still feel like I can be like proud of the effort I put in. So we're gonna get started with uh, my star of Spica. And the funny thing is why I, the reason why I chose the star was mainly just because it was blue. Well, I hopped onto a Stellarium, which is let's just see like the stars in the sky. And when I saw the blue stars, like, you know, that's the one I want to do. So uh, you can say I appreciated the freedom we were given in this internship. So yeah, Spica is the 16th brightest star in Earth's night sky. And it's only 260 light years away from Earth. And it's a binary star, which means there are like two stars in its system. And the spike is visible within the Virgo constellation. All right, and for my galaxy, I have the NGC 1097. Um, facts about it is it's also known as Caldwell 67. And it's a barred spiral galaxy located 46 million light years away from Earth. And it's featured within the Fornax constellation. And it was discovered by William Herschel. And for my nebula, which was uh, my favorite of the three, because the way it came out with all the purple colors and everything and stars in the background. And the stats, the facts about it is it's also known as the Myron's Nebula. And it was discovered by Jean Jacques Dorf de Myron around 1731. And it's a planetary nebula that's within the Orion constellation. And... All right, thank you, Julian. All right, let's let's move on. Allison. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Allison Cabrera and I'm an incoming senior at Warren High School in Downey. I want to start off by saying that I loved working in this internship because I was able to go down my own path and make my own designs while still being able to appreciate the work that others did while I collaborated, 
while I collaborated with them. Um, I enjoyed being able to do research and actually get like images of stars and things that I wanted to focus on, along with customizing my presentations to the way I like. So I'll, I'll start off by showing you guys my presentations. I'll kind of like skim through the facts because there's still stuff that I want to talk about. So this one is Cause Australis, and it's actually the largest star in the Sagittarius constellation. Um, next slide. Next one. Oh my God, this one's so pretty. Okay, so this one is the Whirlpool Galaxy, also known as Messi A 51A. And it's located in the Keynes Venetici constellation. And it's about 23 million light years away from Earth. Um, next slide. Oh my God, this one's so pretty too. Okay, so it's the Trifid Nebula. And this nebula is also located in the Sagittarius constellation. And it was given its name, Trifid, because it could be divided into three different sections. So the first section is a red emission nebula that you can see right there. Um, the next one is a blue reflection nebula. And then the next part is a dark nebula. Okay, so besides that, I also really liked working in this internship because I was able to work alongside others and learn more about stars, galaxies, and nebulas that I honestly wouldn't have really like paid any mind to if it weren't for my peers and their presentations. Um, I was definitely interested in astronomy before, but actually being in this internship showed me how much of a love for knowledge you have to have in order to perform your best in your career. Working in this program also introduced me to the actual fundamental knowledge and processes that go into working in the astrophotography field and making these pictures that get processed for the public to see. Although I do think that this program was an amazing ex experience in itself, one way it could have been even better was by making it sort of like less centralized. I feel like interns actually going through the process of sending and getting back images themselves would have made it feel like a more real and authentic science experience. It would also simplify the program since you wouldn't even have to refer back to another person to see the status of your image request and you'd be able to get more done in between Zoom meetings throughout the week. Um, learning more and getting some foundational knowledge about the way astrophotography actually works alongside collaborating and reaching out to others in this internship really showed me how interested I am in science and research. From this program, I also learned that I definitely want to pursue something in the science and research field in the future. And it also taught me how much I actually enjoy learning new things and creating things independently. I'm so grateful to have been a part of this astrophotography internship. And with that, I reached the end of my presentation and I want to thank you guys all for listening. Awesome. Thank you so much, Allison. All right, John. Hi, um, I'm John Neverth. I go to Davis Senior High School and I'm going to be coming, incoming junior this year. Um, I'd just like to start off with my experience with the program and what I think this program could lead on to. Um, this program has been an incredible experience and has, have, has helped my interest in photography and astronomy. At the beginning of the year, I had no interest in astronomy, but this program has helped me and I believe it could help get others get an amazing experience. With this Buddha education, I have learned what it's like to work in a professional environment and how it is much different than a school environment. This program was significant and an exceptional experience for me, and I believe it could be an amazing experience for other kids who do not have the opportunity to experience stars. Another great thing about this program is how well it was run and how flexible it was. I believe that this program could benefit many children who have a great passion for astrophotography. Um, we could move on to the photos. Um, this star is Alpha Ophuchi. Uh, it was discovered by a Greek astronomer named Ptolemy. This star is the head of a constellation known as Razagu, meaning the head of a snake charmer. In Greek mythology, the constellation represents a healer who is said to resurrect the dead. And Ophuchi is the brightest star in the constellation. 
Um, my next photo is Centaurus A. Um, on April 29th of 1826, Centaurus A was discovered by a Scottish astronomer named James Dunlop. What I found most interesting about this galaxy is that it has a supermassive black hole at the center of it. Um, this galaxy is named after its location in the Centaurus constellation. Um, my last photo is Messier 17, also known as the Omega or Swan Nebula, because it resembles like from a swan's neck. The nebula was discovered by Philip Lois de Jesu. Messier 17 is one of the youngest star clusters at only a million years old. This nebula is one of the brightest nebulae due to this radiation from young stars being born. Um, I just want to end off with thanking Andrew for being a great boss or teacher type, but yeah, he was really understanding and I just want to thank him for the amazing experience I had. Hey, thank you so much, John. Uh, I think Julian was having some uh, trouble joining is, is, or Jamie, is Jamie here? All right. And I know Gianni Hi, was having Oh, hey, yeah. okay. awesome, awesome, great. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Jamie. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Jaime Valdovinos. And uh, at first, I want to start off by thanking everybody involved, like the Beha group and Andrew and his group of Blue Dot for giving me the opportunity uh, to do this internship. I feel like I was really able to grow, not only intellectually through the internship, but creative, like as a creative, which was one of my main goals for this internship. And I'm really happy to be here and that I was given the opportunity. Okay, so starting off, I actually had the same star as John, which you guys seen have seen earlier. It's called Razahag. But he also mentioned that it has another name, Alpha of Alpha Officioni, uh, which is a binary star system located in the constellation of Ophi Ophishukis, which is a uh, directly translated to serpent bear and is also the brightest point in that star, in that uh, constellation. The star has an apparent magnitude of 2.07 and is 48.6 light years away from Earth. It's also one of 13 equatorial navigational stars of the Western Hemisphere. Moving on, uh, M77, which is uh, also known as NGC 1068 and the Squid Galaxy, is a spiral galaxy 47 million light years away from Earth. Close to the constellation of the sea monster, M77 is an island universe about 100,000 light years across. The squid galaxy's core grows, glows bright at X ray, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, and radio wavelength. Spir spiraling its core is a red light emitted by hydrogen and traced by dust clouds. Moving on to M57, which is my nebula. It is the ring nebula, a planetary nebula, with glowing remains of a sunlight star of a sun-like star. The tiny white dot in the center of the nebula is a star's hot core called a white dwarf. M57 was the, was discovered around 2,000 light years away in the constellation Lyra by the French astronomer astronomer Antoine de Quarry. De Quarry. De, de Heb in, in 1779. Okay, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you guys so much. Uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Jaime. Um, I apologize earlier. It was Gianni that had reached out that was having some uh, issues joining this morning. So um, I can quickly share uh, the work that he did. You know, there's the, the star that Gianni was able to capture um and uh there were the the galaxy was really faint for this one as well um sometimes it even pushes the limits of these massive impressive observatories and uh the iris nebula as well which is also seen usually in the winter sky but um it's a reflection nebula that was really impressive and i'm you know hopefully we get a chance to to hear from gianni at some point uh, moving forward when he uh can work out some of the some of the issues he's he's dealing with right now. So that that concludes our presentations from the interns. Uh, I would love 
to have a moment now to, you Andrew, know, first I just want to say, Maddox you. who arrived as well. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, Maddox. Let's, let's, that. Well, that does not conclude <laughs> our presentations. Maddox, uh, go ahead. Uh, hello, my name is Maddox Reyes. Uh, I'm an incoming senior at Downey High School. And um, let me screen share. And um, before this internship, I wasn't really interested in much in astrophotography, but I felt um, it suited one of my interests best. And uh, I was really appreciative of the opportunity because now at the end, I think it was like the perfect storm with the um, revelation of the James Webb telescope and uh, Andrew's excitement. Like every, that was really something like uh, a lot of the times we were coming in and we were nervous and you know, we weren't really social and Andrew uh, kind of pried any uh, social ability we had at the time of our meetings. And I think that really helped uh, move the internship along and it really made me enjoy the experience. Uh, but my star was Antares, uh, the brightest star in the Scorpio, Scorpio um, constellation, Messier number um, M4. Uh, Antares has a radius about 680 to 800 times of that of the sun and is a uh, 550 light years from Earth, um, which is really amazing when you think about it to think that we can have a picture of it. Um, the name Antares comes from the Greek phrase meaning rival of Eris. Um, my galaxy was the pinwheel galaxy, otherwise known as uh, Messi Messier number uh, 101. Um, the pinwheel galaxy was discovered by Pierre Machin in, 19, in 1781. Uh, the pinwheel galaxy, uh, I believe, is 70% bigger than the Milky Way galaxy in diameter and is also very far away from us at 170 light years. Um, the pinwheel galaxy can be observed in part of the Big Dipper. And finally, my nebula, uh, the Eagle Nebula. I really enjoyed, I think this one was my favorite because uh, it had uh, the most going on. It had like the prettiest colors in my opinion, which isn't very scientific, but uh, the Eagle Nebula was discovered by Jean Philip uh, de Jacques in 1745, uh, or believed to be 1745 or, or 1746. Uh, the Eagle Nebula is a cloud of gas and dust located um, 6,500 light years from Earth. And it's uh, the location of the several famous structures, including the stunning pillars of creation, um, which are pictured in the right side. Um, and that will conclude my presentation. Uh, I just want to thank you, uh, Bayer Group, and Andrew for the experience in this internship. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, again, apologizing for, you know, ending a little earlier right before that, you know, it was, of course, last but not least. Thank you, Maddox. Um, and so, you know, that 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 concludes some of our work there. I just want to kind of recapture a little bit about the significance of this work moving forward before we get into the Q&A. Um, again, it was it was very open ended. You know, we were giving an opportunity to explore use of this uh, remote observatory technology that's now available to us. And you know, how that can lead to more access and inclusion within a field that has been marginalized for, for a variety of reasons. Um, and, you know, it's in the science field, when you uh, go beyond a frontier, like there's new things that are discovered, of course, and, uh, you know, things that were unexpected, um, things that, you know, kind of like shift the way that, uh, you know, we can move forward. And analogous to in the education field, I think when you create more accessibility and inclusion within a field of practice that previously, you know, wasn't as easy to create that accessibility and inclusion, you get a much more dynamic range of people of different experiences that are able uh, to, to now invest themselves and be creative and innovative within those fields. And you just see, you see, you know, what's possible when that, you know, dynamic range of minds really increases. So I'm excited, you know, for the work that was done and the potential for this program to continue and uh, 
more students from urban areas or areas where they just might not have had an opportunity to do this type of work, you know, to get access and to see what they can do. So thank you for, you know, to everyone for, for doing that work and showing what, you know, a little bit of what could be possible. And, you know, it was really impressive. And I'd love to get into some Q&A for any of you in the audience that would love to hear more from any, anyone about their experiences or any of the work that they had done. I guess I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to Andrew. Thank you to all of the interns. It was really great to hear your stories about how some of you had a lot of interest in astronomy and photography, astrophotography, and some of you really didn't. And you still took the chance and 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 embraced the, the opportunity. So I wanted to congratulate you all and thank you for your showcase, for all of your work. And I wanted to also just share a little bit about why we picked this one. This is one of the a, a newer, this is one of the new deep dives that we offered this summer. And the reason behind it is because one of the school districts that we work with actually has a teacher preparation um, uh, CTE pathway. And so when Andrew and I were talking about how could we align the summer experience to some of the pathways that are offered at the school districts, this one was designed specifically for that education um, teacher preparation pathway. So, so a little bit just that's the background. And then I do want to ask the interns, some of you brought this up, that you weren't really sure what to expect. And, and you saw the job posting. This was an internship. It's paid. It was to work from home. I would love to hear your thoughts about what you thought it would, what it, what you thought it was going to be and what it turned out to be for you. So does anyone feel open to share or could I call on you? Oh, go ahead, Nirvan. Uh, yeah, um, and I, I mean, I'm so, yeah, I'd, I'd like to give my two cents on, on that question. Uh, so I came into this internship um, with an, an interest in doing astronomy in post-secondary education. So I thought, okay, um, seeing, you know, the posting, the job posting uh, for this internship and seeing that astrophotography was among one of the points of focus um, uh, for one of the deep dive internships, I thought, well, hey, I don't think I'm really going to get this opportunity again, because I rarely see anything about astronomy anywhere, um, in my town for that matter. Like, I think, um, this is going to be uh, a very rare chance that, um, is going to be important for me to like put on my resume and, um, you know, be able to, um, talk about in the future when I want to, you know, uh, maybe get a another internship relating to astronomy or, you know, um, other other things like that. But, um, you know, so I kind of came into it. It was like, all right, this is just kind of another thing I'm going to put on my resume. It's probably going to be like maybe an introductory course of some stuff that I've learned about. And maybe 50 percent is what I've learned, already learned. And 50 percent is going to be, you know, something new. But uh, coming out of this internship, I realized that a lot of the things that I did in this internship weren't in my awareness at all. Um, I spent a lot of my time, you know, reading about theoretical astronomy and uh, doing kind of uh, theoretical astronomy work with, you know, some of the, you know, nitty, nitty gritty things that it involves. And uh, this internship was definitely a refresher from that. I think getting to do observational astronomy and uh, work with that was eye-opening. Um, and I, yeah, uh, I think uh, I, I really saw a difference between how I viewed the internship before and after. Is there anything you learned about yourself you didn't know that that you learned um, in the process? Um, I mean, yeah. So given that I've had um, an, uh, an interest in astronomy since eighth grade, I wouldn't say anything about my interest in astronomy has changed, but it's definitely changed how I viewed astronomy because um, uh, I've, I, before this internship, I, what I thought of uh, astronomy was, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty tough field um, getting into it. Um, uh, it's like you're really dedicating yourself to some pretty rigorous work. And um, I didn't really see anything outside of that. Um, so yeah, um, I think my interest in astronomy changed in terms of myself. Sorry, I, I, I kind of went off at the tangent there, 
But in terms of myself, um, I think I've learned that um, I really have to open my doors a little bit, open my horizons a little bit, because um, kind of viewing one thing as just um, just kind of setting my ideas in stone and not really like, you know, giving my chance, uh, giving myself a chance to like, a really, you know, broaden my perspective on something is going to limit me. Um, and uh, I think going forward with uh, the experience I had with this internship, um, I'm definitely going to, whether I know about something or not, broaden my perspective on it. Thank you. Does anyone else want to share? Um, I guess I'll share. Mm. Sorry if my voice isn't the greatest, but here we go. Hmm. Um, I think what I learned about myself is that, like, if I'm learning something completely different, like something big, it can change my perspectives. Perspective. Well, of basically stuff like space itself or like how science works or technology is developed yeah and i know that like when doing science like discovering new things is not very easy see so yeah yeah it's it's made me a bit more thankful for like scientists around the world you know yes thanks jose yeah you're welcome oliver can i pick on you to share yeah um so i think something i kind of expected um you know out of this internship i honestly like i had no clue like what would happen because like I didn't even know like taking pictures like I guess virtually you could say it would even be possible. Um, I kind of wasn't really like aware you could do this, um, and so I honestly had no clue what to expect. <laughs> I was, I was kind of coming into this blind, but um, I ended up really really liking this. And as I said previously, like I'm I'm pretty much like changing my major um, because this is something that. I, I really love doing and it's something that um, I've been wanting to pursue for a while, but I didn't know, you know, if what way I was exactly leaning. Um, and I guess I figured out a way, you know, I didn't have to necessarily lean. I could kind of combine um, both into one. And so this was a really, really important experience for me. And I really, really liked it. So um, thank you for the opportunity. I'm just curious for you, if you would share something that you learned about yourself that you didn't know before the internship. Um, yeah, so something that I learned myself, I think, um, was just that, like, if, like I said before, I mean, I, when I'm really, like, interested in things, um, I'll, I'll, like, just kind of dive deep into whatever I want to focus on. Um, and that's like, that was really, really, that happened like so many times during this, like I can't even explain how many times, um, but it had always been kind of there for me. Um, and that interest just in like astronomy and stuff had always just been there. Um, and this kind of just, I guess, pulled it out more. Um, and it it's just, it's crazy to me because I never thought that um, I would be able to, that something like this would like make such a big impact on me. Um, and it really did. So um, I think that um, something that was really important that I learned was just um, about myself is just like to kind of, I guess, let things happen. And if I enjoy them, I enjoy them, which I really did. Um, and, you know, if I don't, uh, maybe just find a new way to go about it or try something new. And um, this was a new thing for me and I really, really liked it. So, Thanks, Oliver.
let's see. Niobe, would you be willing to share? Yeah, of oh, okay, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so um, prior to this, like prior to all of this, like Oliver, I didn't really know what was gonna happen. I mean, I wasn't sure how I was gonna be able to capture pictures of, you know, the sky or galaxies and everything through a screen, which is the same thing Oliver thought. Um, but getting access to all of that and was incredible within itself and I was mind blown how we were still able to access these photos and having access to these telescopes and being able to process all of this which is so cool um so that was something that I really loved about it and yeah I found fun in the unknown because I went blind and having all this experience and getting to know people and working with Andrew was amazing um and yeah uh this tapped into my creative side. This is more something I learned about myself. Um, I don't really tap into much creativity, which I feel like I should now because I loved every second of it. And yeah. Is there something that you learned about yourself that you didn't know before? Um, I'm not sure about knowing before, but I definitely like my creative side was one thing that I definitely brought out in this. So that was definitely fun. Um, but I guess like working in places that I wasn't so comfortable with, or I guess that's what I learned about too, since I didn't really know anything about this. So one thing. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else want to share about their experience? Allison, would you be willing to share? <laughs> yeah, so coming into this internship, like, I don't know why I had this idea in my mind that we we're gonna like actually build our own telescopes. So like, when you guys were passing out like our little notebooks and stickers, I was like, um, where's my telescope at? Like, I literally thought we were gonna build them ourselves. But then like actually like learning that it was gonna be like virtual, like remote telescopes I found that like super cool so I guess like one thing I learned about myself is that I like trying new things and like like actually like experiencing them I know it, it was a curious name right astrophotography we had definitely curiosities about that how about one more could I get a volunteer or could I voluntold you Uh, I think I'll share. Or, Thanks, John. Uh, oh, okay. Um, yeah. When I first, I I just heard astrophotography, and I thought we'd be getting, like, um, like our own telescopes, like she said earlier. And, but it was like it's gonna cost too much money, so I thought it'd be something else. Um, yeah. I just went into the, the internship with an open mind, you know, positivity, saying that whatever happens, it should be fun and. It was, it was a great experience, especially with Andrew. Thank you. Maddox, you wanted to share? Sorry, I cut you off. No, it's all right. <laughs> um, I was going to say with the um, internship, I think uh, for me personally, it uh, brought me to show initiative that like previously I didn't really have because um, I, I with the star processing images and uh, just the processing of images uh, is something I was like completely unfamiliar with. And then, you know, I never perfected it, but as the internship got along, you know, I used resources to like help me further. Uh, I asked uh, other team members like Oliver to help me, you know, so it really uh, pushed me to like, get better work for the sake of having better work and not for a grade. Yeah, those images that all of you t got were amazing. <sighs> Blown away with those. And I wasn't really quite sure what it was gonna be either, honestly. <laughs> so it was really cool to watch all of your presentations and and I'm just also curious, I'm a researcher also, I'm just curious, how many of you had done research as 
uh, with as much depth as you did. I'm just curious if any of you would like to share about your, some of you did share about the research process and what that was like for you. Does anyone want to add to what you said previously? Um, I guess I will do this. Okay. So, so basically my research is not just plan on going to Google or Wikipedia. I also spent some a little bit of time with YouTube videos and other sources I could find just like like to simplify some information the here and there and I did go to Google and Wikipedia as well but when going to Wikipedia I looked at another source within it to like Wikipedia does have a bunch of sources and they could be credible at times you know and yeah i thought that was sort of fun nice thank you you're welcome go for it all know. right um yeah, so in terms of uh, the research that I did, um, because I think I had a little bit of uh, prior knowledge for like a little bit of astronomical terms, it was um, a little bit uh, easier for me to decipher what Wikipedia was saying, because when you go to Wikipedia articles, they have a lot of very, very com uh, complex information that's difficult to decipher without you understanding the basics of astronomy. And with that, I kind of... Um, I, I uh, use my own brain power to just really put it into my own words uh, in the best way possible. And um, I think uh, how uh, my research on um, celestial objects has impacted me is that um, when I did um, astronomy work in extracurricular activities, um, uh, which in more, um, in more specific terms, I did Science Olympiad, um, there were always sections of tests um, during mates where it's like, you got to identify this celestial object. And I was always like, partner, you got me on that one. Because um, I feel like the names um, were a little bit complicated for me at the time. But doing the research that I did now, I think I'm going to be more motivated to do um, identifying celestial objects in the future when I do go back to that kind of work. And um, uh, that is definitely the most, the main way that um, the research I did in this internship uh, has impacted me. Thank you so much. Um, right. Jane, just to follow Nirvan's on there, you know, we spent a lot of time trying to flesh out what are good ways to process data, because that's really the creative side of this. How do you take the data and curate it and process it to present to audiences so that they can see it? And I know Nirvan spent a lot of time doing that. And I actually hadn't seen his Dumbbell Nebula until this presentation. And I just want to hear from him, like, what's your process for getting to that? How did you get that? That image is, is, is amazing. So I, um, when I'm processing those kind of images, uh, I, I use Photoshop Express, which is a little bit more, um, more of a specific program that I take these images, I put them in. Um, and the first thing I do is just make sure that the brightness is not too, uh, not too bright or not too dark. You know, sometimes um, it'll look fine, but then when I turn down the brightness of the image, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll come to life a little more. And then um, I go into color edits. I look at, you know, vibrance and saturation, which bring out the colors that you'll see in this nebula. Um, in the original, um, the original image, um, it was a very green, uh, it was a very green nebula, and you cannot see any blue. And so with the edits that I did in terms of vibrance and saturation, I was able to bring out the blue in that nebula. Um, and then um, usually after that, those are the most important edits that I make to an image. Um, I'll usually go into maybe sharpening or maybe, you know, reducing a little bit of color noise. Um, so, uh, you know, just they're very small tweaks, but can be important when making the image look good. And that is pretty much, um, that's, that's the most basic edit that I do. Sometimes I get a little bit more complicated and go into some niche tools in 
um, Photoshop to get like selective edits, but that's the most basic form of the editing that I do. Awesome, thank you so much. And just for clarity, the edits isn't necessarily as destructive to the data as it is just trying to emphasize certain parts of it visually. Yeah, it's, that's, there's an art, right? <laughs> And that's another thing about science that, you know, if anybody would like to, to talk a little bit more about, you know, I know science can be looked at the perspective on it and it can be presented in ways, especially in traditional education as this dry subject where it's like, ask questions, get answers. But, I, you know, one of the things I really wanted to have in this experience as we're developing this program for other participants to use is the, uh, the, the impression that science can not just be about answering questions. It can be more about like satisfying curiosities. Um, and that there is a lot of personal creativity that can uh, go into that work as well. Um, and so I think those are some things that sometimes aren't always associated with science work, like this idea of pursuing like this emotional engagement of curiosity and wonder and also uh, being creative in that endeavor as well. So I don't know if anybody would like to speak a little bit about that. Is that a discrepancy that anyone else felt before? I think, yeah, I can just give a quick anecdote. Obviously, I don't want to um, take away from anybody else's responses, but uh, I think uh, that idea definitely relates to what I said about, um, you know, theoretical astronomy versus observational astronomy. Theoretical astronomy feels more like a science and observational astronomy feels more like an art. Well, I'm just checking YouTube. I don't, I don't, uh, you definitely, one person shared, I loved all the presentations. Great job to each of you. Thanks for that. And, and I wanted to see, Andrew, if you have any final thoughts before I end the live stream. I would, I just have a lot of gratitude for being able to work with these young folks. You know, it's, it's, a lot of times, you know, as a person leading something, you have ideas about what the outcomes might be and what you might find. And I think, you know, when you give young folks an opportunity to be creative, they show you things that you never could have, seen, you know, considered as being possible. And, uh, I'm excited for these young folks to come up and hopefully some of them get into the science field and, you know, show the world like uh, new things that we haven't seen before as well. So uh, I'm truly grateful to have this opportunity. Thank you for everyone I've been able to work with. Yes. I echo that. Thank you all. Thank you for, for applying for the internship and sticking with it and completing your showcase. Thanks for that. I, I just want to make a plug on, on the YouTube that we do have another showcase coming up in uh, just half an hour. So at 10 o'clock, Regenerative Product Design is here on YouTube uh, slash Bea Group. And at 1 p.m., documentary filmmaking. So those of you who know Barb Focus, the, the interns worked on a short documentary film. So please join us for that. It feels more like a film festival. So please come back at 1 p.m. And then finally today at 4 p.m., we have CRISPR. So gene editing. And we're going to be talking with um, the interns who worked on that deep dive. So please come back. And then tomorrow we have our final day of showcases. So this one was number nine of 16. So on Thursday, we have four more. So please join us, uh, subscribe, and we will see you soon. So all of our interns and Andrew stay put. We will hang out, but I'm going to turn off the live.